Uh. Yeah, I see them in the street struggling, young, dumb, and thugging, give a fuck about nothing. Stuck at rock bottom trying to come up on something. Pumping from sundown to sun. All right, guys, it should come as no surprise. My favorite time of the week. It is time for some more Jenna Ortega. It's Wednesday, Wednesday. What's up, guys? True Justice here. Welcome back to my channel. We are back for the reaction to Wednesday. This is season one, episode three, friend or woe, not foe. But I want to bring up one thing before we actually jump in the episode because I was just editing the series premiere for YouTube when I noticed right at the very end of the episode. I don't know why I never brought it up during the reaction. I may have just missed it, but the one dude that's clearly into Wednesday, aren't we all? I forget his name, but I think it's Bianca's ex. He was definitely watching over her right before she headed off to the woods and everything really popped off there. And she got thrown up against a tree and a monster appeared. I'm not saying that he's the monster, but I feel like the show definitely wants us to think that he is a suspect, even though I don't believe it. I feel like my prediction, I'm still sticking to it, that it's Coffee Shop Boy. I don't know why. I just feel in my heart that it's definitely him. But yeah, I'm loving this show so far, the whole murder mystery that they got going on. Last episode was super fun with that entire rowboat competition. That was great television. Hopefully this episode is just as fun. I should say as well that it is pouring rain outside you guys might hear it apologies if you do but i feel like with this show it might actually add to it but if you guys look at my full reactions to the show link to my patreon is down in the description below or subscribe to the channel now's a very good time to click that button down below smash the like button while you're there with that said let's jump right in let's check it out let's go let's assess shall we we shall Bag over my head for optimal disorientation and no idea if i'm going to live or die I kind of forgot all about this at the end of the second episode. our inner You can take the mask off, Bianca. Wait, I preferred you with it on. How did you get down here? Rowan showed me. So everybody knows about this place. I tracked the watermark from the page down to the Poe statue. Then I solved the riddle. Wait, there's a riddle? Well, aren't you the brightest in the bunch? The nightshades are an elite. Definitely a stoner. Emphasis on elite. We have roof parties. She is elite. Only members are allowed in this library. She's a member now. I said we invited a pledge. I'm not interested in joining. You're seriously turning us down? Can you believe it? Untie her. You guys clearly don't know Wednesday. Wednesday. It's amateurs like you who give kidnapping a bad name. There were so many threads to my investigation, I could weave the burial shroud. I still have no idea how Rowan mysteriously rose from the dead. But right now, nothing intrigues me more than this book. The question is, I'm sharing this apocalypse with a pilgrim. We already met some pilgrims in this show. All students who report for their volunteer jobs Fake ass pilgrims. Sharp. As you know, this year, Outreach Day culminates in a very special event. The dedication of a new memorial statue in the town square. Wednesday, don't worry about your cello. I'll have it brought to the town square this afternoon. My cello? I caught your rooftop serenade the other night. Yeah, Impressive. she was like getting off on it. I volunteered you to accompany the Jericho High School marching band at the ceremony. You didn't seem surprised when I showed you this last night. You've seen it before, haven't you? Yeah. Then I confronted him about it and he kind of went ballistic on me. It's unbelievable! Do it How do you do this, Grace? It's an understatement. It's weird that you're in this. Just went a I mean, little ballistic, like, what, throws him up before? against the wall. What the hell is Crackstone doing in the picture with you? You know who that is? Yeah, look. It's a part of this. That's him. Behold, the meeting house. I have with the query. Right, be quick, child. In the meeting house, which of Joseph Crackstone's artifacts are on display? It is truly a treasure trove. I volunteer to work on that. Pray no. That exhibit is being renovated. Today, Damn it. I will all be working at the beating heart of Pilgrim. I was going to say, whatever she needs is definitely in there. Genießen Sie Ihr authentisches Pilgrim Fudge aus Kakao Bohnen, bezogen von den unterdrückten und Bohnen des Amazonas. Fudge wurde ihr 258 Jahre später erfunden. I like her little accent. Hat jemand Interesse? Like, no, no, no. We're good. Thank you. <laughs> Check out this greedy little freak. Please, I need to get back to the... He's gonna throw up. Oh! oh yeah. oh, come here. That was nasty. That wasn't just a little that he spit out of his mouth either. Howdy, what, do you want to end up in the stocks too? Remember no, that? you will. Can we do Here we go again. <laughs> Oh, you're just gonna hit her? 
Like, he was actually trying to hit her. Who do you think you are, Data White? Are you two still here? You can't get into any more trouble with my dad. Wait. Yeah, it's gonna leave him there. Let's get you cleaned up. I know this might come as a shock, but I don't have any friends. Get out of here. I don't believe it. Sans the desire to strangle him every waking moment. That makes Never sense. Worry. I need to know more about this crackstone. So we have a meeting house to break into. Give me your retainer. Now she's what? got herself a sidekick. Are really good. Not as straight or white as Enid's, but still. Hand it over. No. Yeah. Mistress Arlene catches us. Stop talking. Keep watch. You just popped it back into place. My grandmother once told me secrets are like zombies. They never truly die. It's a good I'm not line. Sure what secret crackstone is hiding. The zombies die. He's got a double tap. The answers to my future lie in the past. I think this is the girl from my vision. Yeah, the girl with the white hair. She's even holding the same book. That black Basically, the polar opposite of her. Codex Umbarum. That's Latin for Book of Shadows. Yeah, I would probably avoid that book. Right. What the? It's a fake. I don't know who Etsy is, but I doubt she was an outcast settler. She was not. Just what the fudge are you doing in here, Missy? Mr. What Sarlene? the fudge? How now? How now, indeed. I, I shan't tell you. It's under repair. The original meeting house. The one shown in that painting. Where is it? How the hell should I know? I only moved here from Scottsdale in April. Why are you getting so upset? You're like taking these questions and pilgrimage. A little bit too personal. Can I help you? Shoplifter. You know, by the way, I totally dug the way you scratched out the bottom of our boat at Poco. Oh, shit. Pretty badass. These two are getting closer. Thanks. You're not mad you lost? I was just doing a solid for Xavier. I mean, he's my boy, but he's super competitive. Bro's got a darker side most people don't see. I was thinking of sneaking behind the greenhouse tonight. It's supposed to be a blue moon. Cool. Yo. Hey, have fun. Oh. oh. By the way, you, you know that's where a lot of kids go to hook up, right? You just I'm missed the mark. I just spent all morning flirting and hinting and trying to act cute while brushing some roadkill just so you would ask me on a freaking date. Oh, oh, that's what you were doing. Man, I stoners. I kind of wondered when you spent so long brushing that possum stale. <laughs> you want to meet up behind the greenhouse tonight? Yes. Yes, I do. This is the best show ever, though, and I'll tell you why. It's nice That's to see, fun. even though stoners are still stupid, at least one of them is getting the girl finally. Yeah. It gives your boy hope. Want a coffee? It's one of the many perks of this wonderful assignment. Max, you here for Tyler. Told you he was bad news. Twice. It's gonna make him jelly. Who I speak to is my business. Peanut butter and jelly. Here comes an order of it. You rang? You know the original Pilgrim meeting house? The one from the 1600s? Do you know if it's still around? What's left of it is out in Cobham Woods, but it's pretty much a ruin. You're really becoming obsessed with this whole monster in the woods thing. Would you rather develop an obsession with horses and boy bands? Thank you for the help. She's doing her hey, part. Listen, um, the ruins are kind of tricky to find. If I can take you this afternoon, my shift ends too. I know my way around the great outdoors. Don't tell me you were a Girl Scout. I could eat Girl Scouts for breakfast. I believe I it too. I went to prison for that. <laughs> Like that was just her way of saying goodbye to that simple look. If she even acknowledges you with a look, just take it. I always forget that he's around. I was expecting more too. No. Oh. Who you talking to, little girl? Use the words "little" and "girl" to address me again, and I can't guarantee your safety. This is my place. Get out. Thing a hand here. This is my rubble. Sounds like a job for the hand. I guess you call it a hand job. He ripped his beard off. There's nothing here. No, I can't just touch something. My vision seemed to happen spontaneously. Oh, you want me to prove it to you? No. Keep trying. I bet this will give us some real insight. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna talk a bill in a minute. Ow! Oh! You are a witch, a sorceress. You're a bitch. Lucifer's mistress herself. Be innocent. It is you, Joseph Crackstone, that should be tried. We were here before you. Oh! You are the true monster, all of you! Oh. She 
cut him. Should have gone for the head. Send it ablaze! That's brutal. If I was Wednesday, I'd be like, all right, vision over. Get me out of here. I know just the vision. I still don't want to burn it, though. Run. Avenge us. Find the others and save our future. Follow her. <laughs> there will be no escape for you. Okay, now she's out of it. Bing, I saw her. The girl from my visions. Her name is Goody Adams, and I believe she's my ancestor from 400 years ago. Makes a lot more sense. All right, we're getting some clues here. Slowly, more pieces of the puzzle. Must have been the bearded man from earlier. No! I still think it is Coffee Shop Boy. I know some people would probably watch this like, why the fuck do you think it's him? But I don't know. He knew she was going out there. Monstrous human. Of course. What the hell are you doing? I was following the monster. You saw it? What exactly are you doing here? I overheard you say you were checking out the old meeting house. I guess it's lucky I showed up and I did. Why'd you come up to the old meeting house in the first place? I was trying to learn more about Crackstone. Yeah, and you were trying to use your psychic abilities, right? My dad's a psychic. Vincent Thorpe. She doesn't like people reading her. So I've lived with the self-described master, and the first thing they'll tell you is the psychic visions can't be trusted. They only show you one part of the picture. He gathered all of the outcasts in the meeting house and burned them alive. Okay, I feel like he's dropping some wise words, though. All I'm saying is my dad, the expert, would warn you that psychic ability isn't rooted in logic. It's triggered by emotion. And let's be honest, emotion isn't exactly your strong suit. That makes sense. He's dropping some knowledge over here. Something bad is going to happen and I need to stop it. Starting with that monster. Whoever it is. I don't think it's him. I mentioned at the start, but I think I he's scared me. popping up or looking around whenever it's around. Just as a red herring of some sort. I don't believe in heaven or hell, but I do believe in revenge. It is my honor to celebrate our town's history and Jericho's noble forefather, Joseph Crackstone. Now may the spirit of Joseph Crackstone The voice this guy puts on reminds you of The Wire. She. Yo! Big star some trouble over here. Troublemaker. Fire starter. Solo. Look the little smile she gives whenever it's like something super morbid. Or when she like pleases herself. Probably came out wrong, but let's just go with it. That was a disaster. That's what he gets, Jimmy Crackhorn. I swear on my late scorpion soul, my hands are clean. Her hands. Those are words very carefully there. Why does this town even have an outreach day? Don't you know it's real history with outcasts? I still know if it's the real story now, based off what, I think it's Xavier, what he was saying. But the world isn't always black and white. There are shades of gray. Maybe for you. But it's either they write our story or we do. You can't have it both ways. You're exhausting. I know. She doesn't deny it. But you should know. I don't tire easily. It's true, ass pod. Yeah, this is the third time we've seen this hobo now. Who the hell's there? Oh. He's taking some swipes out of him. Well, you got some snaps of him. Too much. I feel like you just snape on me, Enid. Oh. So glad I have my date with Ajax tonight. Wish me luck. If he breaks her heart, I'll nail gun his. That was actually pretty sweet. I don't believe in mandatory volunteer work, sugar-coated history, or happy endings. But most of all, I don't believe in coincidences. No! 
three coincidences that I know are connected. That's your show. What are you doing? There were monsters everywhere. That wasn't an actual so, reveal. The monsters would be suspect. I thought they were going to show us. <laughs> All she has to do is go to his place. She'll see that he got stoned in the shower. Oh! But I'm looking now. You ugly mother... Fudger. Alright guys, that was Wednesday. Season 1, Episode 3, Friend or Woe. Another really good episode. I'm really enjoying this the show, the series, the season so far, even though we're only three episodes in. There's a lot of like funny moments, a lot of epic one-liners from Wednesday, just her personality overall. I freaking love it. I'll take Jenna Ortega all day, every day, but everything else with a good story on top of that, it's like more than welcome. I'm really enjoying the vision stuff too and the comedy and then the duel, the teamwork between Wednesday and Thing. I said it last time, but if he's not my favorite character, he's definitely my second favorite character after Wednesday because man, He's the man. I don't even know if he was a man, but I'm pretty sure based on the hand that he was a man. So yeah, he, he always comes in clutch every single time, even getting rid of that hobo when he was giving Wednesday a little bit of problems there. Just like, got a job for you, hand job, go do your thing. And then he scurried on off. Then I guess he retreated back there later on in the night. I don't know how long he was actually gone for, but then he got killed later on. Even though the CG of the monster that, <laughs> that killed him, that keeps on re, uh, appearing in the show is not very good. I'm still on board with it all. Like, I really hope that for future seasons, though, that they throw a little bit more money because I feel like everything about this show is amazing, but the CG, for whatever reason, is just not on that same level. But regardless, we still got some cool shots of the monster when we didn't actually see it. Every time they show the face, I'm just like, my God, stop showing the face. It's so bad. Just give us, like, small little glimpses. But the shot when he was actually taking out the hobo near the end of the episode when it was, like, swiping and the camera was going off with the flashes... I thought that was really well done. I absolutely love that. But this was basically like the Pilgrim episode because we saw everybody volunteering in town as well with these jobs. We also got to see some relationships formed between some of the side characters like Enid and the one dude. I didn't catch his name, but unfortunately he didn't show up for their date later on in the episode because he got stoned in the shower. That was a really messed up scene. Some of the CGI there too was a little bit shoddy, but once again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let it slide because hey, slippery went wet in the shower, but we saw the after effect of that because she was basically snapping. She didn't fully go beast mode, but she let it out a little bit. Some of her rage also, which she like scratched the side of the bus and then scratched the tire. That actually looked pretty cool. So I thought that was an interesting scene. Clearly she's not gonna be happy with him moving forward. I don't know how long he's gonna stay stoned for. And it really sucks on his part too. He always has to cover the mirror every single time he takes a shower. Man, I would hate that. I shower like a minimum one time a day. And I saw it. The reason why I bring that up also is I saw, I was scrolling through Twitter, I think yesterday, and there was a weird ad where some OnlyFans model, like one of the highest grossing OnlyFans models or performers, entertainers, whatever you want to call them. Apparently she only showered 37 times last year. What? I... Am I crazy? I like to shower every day, once a day minimum. When I'm sick, man, I'll shower like two to four times. So 37 times, like I thought I was gonna throw up right there. I don't know why I'm bringing that up, but just on the topic of showers, when I saw that, my jaw dropped. I'm like, there's no freaking way that that's real. I guess she was so busy with her OnlyFans account that she didn't have time to shower. Are you fucking kidding me? Go take a shower right now. So yeah, I just had to get that out of the way, but Back to town, back when everything was going off, where they were having a little ceremony for the statue, right after Wednesday had that vision as well, because I really liked, before we actually get to the vision and what went down in the town, I want to bring up one thing that I think it was Xavier was letting Wednesday in on, kind of letting her know all about when it comes to the visions, where he's like, yeah, visions... The way that they happen, they only show you one side of the story. They show you what you really want to see. And they're based on emotion as well with how they work. I think it's roughly, that's roughly what he was saying there. And because she's not the most emotional person, or maybe she is, but she keeps it so bottled up that hers are going to be more sporadic. And that's part of the reason why she can't really control the gift that she does have, that ability to, to see these visions. But nonetheless, this is probably like the most in-depth vision that we did get because we actually learned a lot from it also where we got to see that one pale girl. I thought it was, I was getting really getting like Silent Hill vibes from that, but 
I guess it's actually her ancestor who's kind of filling her in on things, what actually took place, what went down. I just don't know if that was the full story just yet. I feel like there might be a, another twist coming involving Jack, what was his name, Cobblestone or Cornerstone, Cornstone. I'll learn names, but regardless, I feel like what we've seen up until now is not the full, complete story. I could be wrong about that. He could just be a dick villain. That's the villain of the show. But I feel like there's, based off what Xavier was saying to Wednesday involving the visions and not them not telling or showing the full story, I have to believe that there's more to the character of Jack. But we shall see. I could be wrong about that. But uh, regardless, seeing him just basically put everybody up in flames and burning everybody alive in that barn. That was freaking brutal. Thank God her ancestor got away, but then I guess he caught up to her later on. That was freaking brutal. Kind of scary too, when he's like super close to the camera, like yelling, man, that kind of freaked me out. I don't know if it's the Pilgrim stuff, but if you guys have ever played the game, uh, the Dark Pictures Anthology, Little Hope, Really good game. It's another one of those games where it's kind of like watching a movie. There's a lot of like quick times events. You basically gotta just make sure that you're watching and have your hands on the controller, but it's definitely giving me same vibes of that, at least when it comes to those visions. But later on after that, based off what he was saying also, I just don't know if I believe what she's actually seeing, as crazy as that sounds. But after that, in town, during the ceremony, after she learned more about the statue going up, the man behind the statue, she basically shut that shit down. She's like, nope, not having it. He didn't want any outcasts in his town. He burned all the outcasts alive, tried to kill or did kill my ancestors. Like, yeah, I'm not paying any respect to this man and I'm kind of on board with that. She probably should have let more people in on it. Well, I guess Brianna Tarth knew about it as well. What was going on with her at the end of the episode when she's like ripping out the pages of the yearbook involving Morticia and Adams and then throwing into the fire as well. I thought they were besties. Why should like getting rid of that? So yeah, they definitely, they're setting up a lot of things, a lot of things to come, but I really don't know how this whole thing's going to play out, especially involving the, the visions of the past and what it all means really. But that whole ceremony when the statue got blown to pieces, got blown up, that was freaking epic, man. Like I said before, thing MVP of this series so far, of this first season, because he always comes in so clutch. I don't know how nobody ever sees him, though, because if I'm sitting there at a ceremony like that, I don't care if it's like the smallest like spider or an ant that's crawling by on the sidewalk, I'm going to notice that. If I see a full-blown hand running across, I'm going to notice that for sure. But for the sake of things, maybe he's just that good. That's makes him more deserving of the MVP role, the MVP status. But yeah, he was definitely uh, the accomplice there to really set things off and blow shit up. And I even said during the episode, but the Wednesday smiles while Brienne was going off too. She's looking at her like pissed off, knowing that it's her, even though she didn't actually have proof, which Wednesday brought up afterwards. The little smile on Wednesday's part while she's just rocking out over there because I feel like... I don't know. It's it's a rare sighting where she does smile. It's always when she like does something to please herself and not in a sexual way, surprisingly enough, because I'm a raunchy guy over here, especially involving Jenna Ortega every time I see her last episode with the leather. But no, it's these little subtle moments where she just cracks a little smile. I don't know. It's just something about it. I, I just love it. But another great episode. I'm really looking forward to the next episode because I'm pretty sure that that's the one that has the dance. I feel like that's the main thing that... I, I was kind of spoiled on, even though I didn't watch the scene. I've seen so many pictures of that scene, so many like thumbnails of reactors that I do follow, put up even though I never watched these episodes or the episode just yet for myself or even any of their reactions. I've definitely seen the thumbnails and as I've always said, I will always be honest with you guys. So I know there's a dance or something coming up where she absolutely kills it. She does like that whole thing and apparently like it's an epic dancing because I feel like even before I watched a single second of the show, that was the main thing that I had heard about. I'm really looking forward to that, though, just so I can know what it's all about. But, yeah, this is another really good episode. Really looking forward to the next one. As always, definitely let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments down below. If you guys can like, subscribe, it really helps my channel grow. Till next time, I am out. Enjoy your night. Peace. Well, I didn't smoke enough for you. Didn't drink enough for you. Wasn't fun enough for you. Wasn't good enough for you, Dan. You play me like a yo-yo and shit. Well, I'm not the one to be yo-yo.